Welcome back to Vancouver Carpenter, the drywalleriest carpenter on the internet. So, can you use the back side of the drywall? I don't know. Only one way to find out, isn't there? I mean, this is kind of ridiculous because all I would need to do is just cut this hole right here. But if I did that, how would we find this out? And how would I have a video out of it? I wouldn't. Okay, so this is totally sketch because I mean, we got all this loose paper here. So let's take care of all that stuff first. But yeah, it's definitely got some loose fuzzy edges that I'm needing to handle. You can see it right there. Like that stuff needs to get taken care of. That's really loose. Yeah, lots of quick set to, to bury and lock this all down. I gotta say guys, if this works and then you decide to try this silly thing and it fails, uh, you're gonna have only yourself to blame because um, you know, I'm sure it's not recommended. All right, that's looking pretty good. Okay. Yeah, that fits. It's a good start. I always like to refasten the original studs. It will always make any screws next to it pop, but it's still a good idea to do so. Take care of those while you can. So I'm also gonna be using Fiba Fuse for this patch. I told you, you guys were gonna to start to see it in my videos more often now that I have a roll. And I'm just pre-cutting it so that I can put my pieces down and uh, mix up my quick set, come down here and patch it and not be farting around with all the tapes. Just helps speed things up and make sure your mud doesn't set up on you while you're working. One for there. And we need one for right here too. Okay, so I got some 30 minute mud mixed with some glue and hot water to speed it up. We need a little one right here. Just go horizontal or vertical, I mean. Fingers are itching already. Love this stuff. This mud is almost a little bit too dry. It was wetter before I got downstairs. So yeah, the heat is definitely pulling the moisture out quick. Now one thing what I'll often do is I'll put a bit of mud over top of the fiber fuse and that slicks it up a little and stops you from tearing it so easy. This little guy right here. And last but not least, we got this guy right here. Okay, now that we got this taped, 
And because it's fiber fuse and quick set, there's no reason that we can't coat it out. So we'll get a first coat on it. Try and leave it real nice today. Or I should say on this coat so that I can maybe get this done in just one more coat. That would be nice. edges. Could use a little more right here. What's going on here? One of those fibers is lifting up off of the tape. I thought only mesh tape did that. This one's not sitting flat enough. Wait, yeah it is. All right, now I'm farting around with it too much. And I should just walk away from it, call it good and fix it when it's kicking off. But I just can't seem to do that, can I? It's just starting to firm up too. Heating it up really helps. Heating up the water, that is. All right, time to leave it. Okay, so this has had a chance to kick off and it's just at that magic state now where we can polish it a little. If you get any little high and low spots, you can try and use what's on your knife to fill it so that your next coat goes on real nice and smooth. But so far, so good in terms of using the wrong side of the drywall. I've almost forgotten that I even did that, and this is just turning into a like patching with quick set video. But yeah, in all honesty, I've done it once before on a vaulted ceiling of just like a little, you know, sort of like one foot triangular chunk. And it was fine. Spoiler alert. <laughs> um, but hey, maybe this one won't be. All right, I'm, I could mess with that all day. Let's just stop and get a coat of mud on here. Okay, so even though I'm saying right now that this kind of does work and you can do it, there are some stipulations. So I wouldn't do this with a piece of board that has um, like any of the factory edges of the board because the back side of the board has all these different laminations of paper where the white paper underlaps or overlaps the brown paper and so there's all these spots where the glue could let go and you'd get a delamination where the joins of paper are. So definitely, like that would be a really bad idea. If you were planning on doing this or if you did do something like cutting, you know, like I said, a little chunk of a vaulted ceiling wrong and you wanted to use the wrong side of the drywall, 
Um, yeah, if it's just a little piece, and again, you don't have any of the factory edges of the board, you might get away with it. But um, no guarantees. Okay, so will this float out in one coat or is it gonna bubble on me? I mean, either way, I could just do a tight skim and then coat it again in a few minutes. And that'll probably work, but this is, this is actually looking pretty good. Not too porous. Going around things like that is always a bit annoying. Uh, I got a chunk of quick set here that's driving me crazy. It's stopping me from being able to float that properly. I mean, most of this is gonna be behind a cabinet or behind a toilet. So it's definitely fussing a fair bit, which is nothing new. I think I'm gonna put just a little bit more back on here again. You know what? I am gonna do a tight skim. And then another skim. It just works better. And I got these spots like right here that are giving me bubbles. As soon as this gets wiped out tight like that, it's not going to give me bubbles the next time I go over it. So, now let's see if we can leave enough meat on here to get it with just these two coats. Not if there's chunks of quick set in it the whole time. Right, I'm trying to get this so that the next time I come back, it's just ready to sand. And I'm not really interested in hanging around and doing another coat today. So we're trying to do it in two. I'm definitely cheating and skipping a step. But, uh, you know, sometimes that works out in a spot that's mostly behind a toilet and mostly behind a cabinet. Okay. Now I think we're good. Feather that edge. Now this is going onto a patch. If you can even see that far, I don't know. Um, so I'm not feathering super hard because if you feather something really hard over top of existing drywall mud, it won't sand properly. You'll compress the mud. And then what's gonna happen is you're gonna have softer drywall underneath. And you're gonna have harder drywall where you compressed it. It cause you some major grief. If anyone's ever tried to touch up their work before painting, you may have found that out. The key to doing touch ups is I usually do them before sanding and I do them with a really light hand so I don't compress the mud. This is, this is coming together now here. That second coat was what it needed. It's gonna leave a little line anywhere I try to do it. So we are now at the tiddling with the six inch knife stage. So again, don't wipe too hard close to those edges. And I'm just gonna leave some of the blobs around this thing because they're easy enough to sand off. And you can cut, cut. Oh, I just dragged my nail through it. You can kind of come back around a little. Take care of that stuff. And it's, honestly, it's good enough. I need to stop fussing with it around there. Just got one thing here I'm not happy with. Okay. 
and right here. Let's tune that up. Again, good enough for behind the cabinet. Okay, I'm happy with that. We can leave that. Uh, this looks a little low. There we go. Better. Let's get that close up. So you can see there's no major tool lines anywhere that I have to sand. Just light lift offs. Looking pretty good. Like I said, we got those ones around the pipe, but it's easier just to sand those than mess around with them. Looking pretty good. Should all sand pretty flat. Well, this has had about four days to dry, which is exactly how I like it. I love to just leave one day patches over the weekend. It's had its time to do all its funky quick set stuff. And as far as I can tell, it's 100% solid. I mean, let's get more of an up close look at this. So we can see there's the swollen quick set right there and right there. It's had its chance to do its thing and there's plenty of all-purpose mud on there for me to sand it. I don't think this vanity was here last week. Oh well, less for me to sand. Yeah, it looks totally fine. So I guess that answers the question. Um, yeah, <laughs> you can put little pieces of drywall in backwards, upside down, whatever you want to call it. It's kind of dumb. I would definitely not ever recommend it if you don't actually have to do it for some reason. For sure, I just did this for the YouTube video. It worked. Looking pretty good, especially for my house. Well, you guys, there it is. All sanded and cleaned up. And that was even a gem and sanded in here behind the cabinet, even though I probably could have gotten away without doing it. So yes, it can be done. It should not be done almost any circumstances, especially if your customer can see it, but it could get you out of a pinch. Again, don't use any of the factory edges if you have to do it, you know. So, um, yeah, this has been another ridiculous drywall video by the Vancouver Carpenter. I hope you got something out of this video. I would say this video is right up there with taping with the bounce fabric sheet in terms of usefulness. <laughs> um, so, yeah, hopefully you got something out of this video. If you haven't seen the bounce fabric sheet video, I'll try and link that right here in the suggested. Anyways, thanks for watching Vancouver Carpenter. I hope your project's going well, but I hope you're doing even better. Till the next one, you guys.